Great to have you back here on The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. It's time for Today in History, and I'm going back to the year 1974. Um, once again, going to be sharing with you uh, things that have to do with African politics and some very, very embarrassing moments. Um, on this day in 1974, there was a military coup in Niger Republic, and President Diori Hamani was deposed. A man called Saini Kunche was a Nigerian military officer who led the 1974 coup d'etat that deposed the government of Niger's first president, Hamani Diori. He ruled the country as military head of state from 1974 to 1987. Uh, Star General Saini Kunche, which of course uh, Niger's national stadium in Niamey is named after him, um, after of course uh, his um, coup. Kunche's first official acts were to suspend the constitution dissolve the National Assembly, ban all political parties, and release political prisoners. A Supreme Military Council was established on the 17th of April, also in 1974, with uh, Kouche as uh, president. It stated the mandate, or rather its mandate back then, was to distribute food aid fairly and to restore morality to public life. Um, the military government's major preoccupation was planning an economic recovery. Plots to remove him, even after he had come in through a coup, were twatted in 1975 and again in 1976. In 81, he began to increase civilian representation in the um, military council, the Supreme Military Council. And in 82, preparations were undertaken for a constitutional form of government. 85, uh, following an armed incident near the Niger-Libyan border, all non-Nigerian Tuaregs were expelled from the country. And of course, uh, later on, his health deteriorated in late 86 and continued to worsen in 87. He eventually died in November 1987 in a hospital in France. Mm -hmm. um, that's the story of 1974 to 1987. Mm -hmm. um, a person who um, stepped into the leadership of Niger Republic through a coup um, and eventually you know, held on to power, tried to you know, put his own policies set up a Supreme Military Council, mm. try to, you know, make his own changes in government. Most times in Africa, when there is a coup of any sort, they always blame, um, you know, failure of the economy. Right. They blame, you know, misrule and, you know, um, high-handedness of the government and whatever excuse that there is. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I, I, between 80, um, was it 80, 80? I can't remember now. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> so there were two separate years in his rule where he also... Um, survived coup attempts. He knew people also tried to overthrow his government, but um, unfortunately, or fortunately for him, he survived all those attempts and stayed on till 87 when he died. Mm. Um, and I'm guessing, you know, and I'm sure that I'm not going to be wrong, that if he didn't have health challenges in 87 um, and eventually uh, pass on, he probably would have held on to power for a lot longer. So you got a crystal ball or something? I mean, I'm, I'm, yes, my crystal ball really shows me what African <laughs> leadership is like. You know, sure. in places where there is not, you know, a strong democracy and strong systems. They, they... Africa has had its share of coups, and it's still happening. Yeah, still, yes, of course, still happening. Sadly. Oh, time to move on, right? So I'm doing an about turn as usual, and we are going, you know, outside Africa. So the strange, we're going to talk about the strange legacy of uh, Tupac's hologram, which lives on five years after his historic Coachella uh, debut. 2012 hologram of a late rapper Tupac features on stage with Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre at the music festival. So with just four days until the start of the 2012 uh, Coachella Valley Music and Arts Festival, there was no room for any more mistakes and hip hop uh, rapper. Dr. Dre Young had a specific vision for his headlining performance with Snoop Dogg. On the 15th of April 2012, Dr. Dre and Snoop's set, a shirtless figure, emerged with a thug life tattoo on his stomach, pinky rings on his hands, pants sagging, and timberlands on his feet. It almost looked real. So it was the perfect surprise for the final act of the night on the main stage. And Tupac's fans, of course, had a fit. Well, Dr. Dre and Snoop having already floated through nearly 20 tracks, though no moment would compare to what came next. So a computer-generated Tupac made this proclamation to the crowd of 80,000. On this night, the Tupac hologram, what many still call the virtual being, was born. 
Um, the Hall of Fame music artist died at the age of 25, three years before uh, Coachella debuted in 1999. But Tupac made it to that stage because Dr. Dre made sure of it. Do you think this is one of the reasons why Tupac's fans still believe he's alive and hiding somewhere? Um, so I don't think it's one of the reasons, but I think it's also, it's one of the ways that they try to keep him, you know, um, in, in, keep him alive, basically, yes, mm -hmm. you know, and keep him, you know, in, in the very precious memories of his fans across the world. Mm -hmm. um, the conspiracy theories of him being alive someplace, you know, hiding somewhere in Cuba or some, yeah. you know, I don't know where it was. <laughs> Those <laughs> ones, um, they, they tried to push that for a bit, but obviously that didn't work because he died in 1996. It's 2021. If you're still alive, come out already. Because but, why are you hiding? Are you, are you, <laughs> but, oh, is he scared of being killed again? <laughs> so obviously, you know, th those um, um, you know, stories are false. Mm. Um, but it, it was a way that they tried to use technology to bring him back. You know, we've seen these things in movies. We've seen them, you know, um, in um, uh, documentaries and the, and the mm. likes. Um, so they tried to use some level of, you know, some technology, which was, of course, the... Um, the hologram. It's hologram about, yeah, to light interference and yes. all of that. Yeah. Yes, you know, and it, it was it was spoken about a lot, you know, when this happened. Um, in 2012. Um, and, you know, there's people who also criticized it, you know, and said, you know, there's really no need. If a person is gone, let him go, you know. But there's those who also, you know, thought to themselves, man, um, if you do, they'll give anything, you know, to get a, you know, as close as possible a, a picture or a video or um, some, you know, live, as, uh, um, you know, feed of Tupac again. And so they, they did enjoy that. Mm. So it's, it's a good thing. Right? It's, it's, it, yeah, I think it's a good thing. Okay. Um, it does bring back, you know, help you relieve some memories. It does also, you know, help you reconnect with a person that you may have lost in a long time ago. Um, a lot of people, I believe, would want to have holograms of their loved ones every now and then to have certain conversations, to listen to some things that they said in the past. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, just to build that connection. Some people want it, some people don't. Yeah, so I don't think I want it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, today in history is what we have for you, uh, 2012 and the year 1974 in Niger Republic. Uh, we're going to go on a short break. When we come back, we're moving into our first major conversation for today. How does it feel to work for 20 straight months without pay in two successive governments? One government owed you salaries for nine months. A new government came into power or came into office and has owed you for an another 11 months. Oh. How have the resident doctors in Abia State been coping? And that's what we're talking about right after the short break.